Hello there, Taurus. Thank you so much for stopping by for your weekly tarot video report for the week, or forecast, I should say, for the week of February 8th through the 14th. Yes. So, um, I do want to say I've got a, one more mentoring class that is scheduled right now that is coming up for February the 28th, 6.30 in the evening mountain time. You guys can figure out what time that would be for you. If you would like to be a part of the group mentoring session to expand your psychic abilities, go ahead and uh, check out my website for contact information and then just let me know. Um, if that time doesn't work for you and you're interested in a group mentoring session, let me know too and we'll schedule something that works for you and then just invite other people to join us. Now, let's get started with your forecast. Um, and if you guys, I don't know what you can hear actually through this microphone, but if you can hear somebody outside shoveling snow, <laughs> that's what's going on. And I have my window a little bit cracked because I have forced um, like steam heat and it gets so hot in here and it gets so dry in here that I need to have my window open. So if you can bear with the snow shoveling sound, I would appreciate it greatly. All right, so Taurus, Monday, what you have showing up is you have the chariot card. I love to see this card. This just means, Taurus, that you have some goal that you are, that you've probably been working on reaching for a while now. Usually this is not an instantaneous type thing. And this goal is something that requires your own self-determination, self-discipline, along with either the encouragement or the support of other people as well. So it's kind of a teamwork thing, really. And what's going on on Monday is that you are manifesting this goal into your life. So good for you. Um, an example of this might be uh, maybe you have an anniversary of a date that you've been sober. Maybe you have um, bought a home, you know, because you have to cooperate with the title company and all of that stuff too. Um, anniversaries of sober too. I mean, if you're going to meetings, you have you have cooperation and support of all those people in those meetings. You have cooperation and support, hopefully, of family and loved ones. But also your self-discipline, your own self-will, um, your own force, your own life force moving that forward. Um, this can also be some kind of project at work where everybody kind of had to work together to pull this off and make it happen. Lots of different ways that this can manifest to us, but um, really good news to see that you're manifesting some goal or some target that you had for yourself. Now, on Tuesday, what you have coming up is the Empress card in reverse. So what I want to know, is this you or is this someone you're dealing with? Okay, so this just happens to be coming in as you. So the Empress card in reverse, I take that really as uh, my codependent card. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know what codependent is, a codependent person is somebody who grew up in a situation that was chaotic and generally and that's made that person feel like if they're not in control of the situations that they're around or involved in, then things are bound to go wrong. And so naturally they become control freaks. They want to control everything. And then what happens is they start really stepping into other people's territory to control things, especially if there's some kind of issue with that other person that makes them feel like, well, they can't do a good job, so I'll just I'll just come over here and just do this real quick and it'll be easier for me than for them anyway. So that's kind of, um, in a nutshell, a codependent person and, and some of their behaviors. So when we have the Empress card showing up for you in reverse, Taurus, um, this is just telling me that on Tuesday, it's going to be really easy for you to want to step over into somebody else's territory and try to do stuff that they should be responsible for or take care of things that they should be responsible for. Um, since you have the heads up <laughs> of this reading, if you feel that energy moving in, you might want to try not to go there. And the reason that I say you might want to try not to go there is because when we do take care of things that other people basically are the ones who are responsible for, after a while, we start to feel a little bit like we're being taken advantage of or not being appreciated or whatever. And we also are spending time taking care of something somebody else should be taking care of when we could be taking care of us and our stuff. And that's, you know, we were given this life to handle, to be in charge of, to answer for. So if we're not taking care of our stuff, but we're busy over there taking care of somebody else's stuff, um, that's not a good thing. So it doesn't affect you in a good way. Uh, but also, it doesn't affect that other person in a good way either. I mean, I know that it's real easy to think, oh, I'm just helping them out. 
And I can speak on this at great length because I am definitely codependent, <laughs> uh, but uh, hopefully in recovery. So it's it's easy to think, oh, I'm just helping that person out. Well, really, no, you're not. You're handicapping them because you're sending a very clear message to that person. I don't think you can do this or I don't think you can do this well or I don't think you can do this well enough. And so what does that person start to believe when you send that message? They start to believe you that they can't do it that well. So then they start depending on you to do it all the time. And now they can't do it that well because they haven't had any practice at it. They don't even know how because you always do it. So like I said, that's really handicapping them and it's handicapping you because it's taking away from time that you could be spending handling your own stuff. So let other people handle their stuff. You handle your stuff. That's the smoothest way to let the world go round. Okay, so, and I do feel like I need to say, so there's somebody out there that needs to hear this because I tried to go on without saying it and I kept getting that little nudge. <laughs> um, for some of you, you've been doing the stuff that comes up on Tuesday for somebody else already for a while. Now you kind of want to shift gears because now you can't just say, oh, I'm not doing that. You handle it. How are they going to handle it? They don't know anything about how to handle it. So for in those situations, um, what you need to do is you need to start teaching that person. So you need to say, yes, I'll ch I will show you how to take care of this. And so sit down with them in front of the computer or be with them while they're on the phone call or whatever it is they're doing. Be there so that if they have questions, be there to guide them, but let them actually do it so they can build up some confidence. And maybe depending on what the task is, let you know, work it that way for two or three times until they feel comfortable and praise the heck out of everything that they do right so that they are building up the confidence so that when you're not around, you know, maybe two or three or four times down the road or maybe even next time, they're like, you know what? I don't need help with this. I, I've got this. And they just handle it. But, you know, you can't leave them out in the cold after you've been doing something for them for a while and just go, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> in those situations, you have to show them how to do it. You have to train them, teach them, and then turn them loose. But if you have somebody coming to you with a new situation that you've never done this for them before, no, you're on your own. You have, this is your responsibility. You need to do this. Okay, so that's Tuesday. Well, I've already spent seven minutes and we've only covered two days. Let's move on here. Wednesday. You guys have the Fool in Reverse. The Fool in Reverse is not my favorite card. It's my favorite when it's right side up, though. Uh, but the Fool in Reverse is just telling me that you have a situation that comes up on Wednesday that you have this inner knowing about. Like, you know how to handle this situation. You know what to do with it. And it's that inner knowing. And sometimes that inner knowing isn't so logical. It's hard to justify it. It's hard to verify it. It's hard to say, oh yeah, this is going to work for sure. It's one of those things that you just kind of have to follow that inner knowing and see where it leads. And so that's what you've got coming up on Wednesday is that you have that inner knowing. But probably because it's not verifiable or justifiable, you're not following that inner knowing. You're just following logic and you're leaving that inner knowing back there on the table somewhere, just leaving it behind. Please don't do that. <laughs> you are missing out if you do that. Please don't do that. Because if you can follow that inner knowing, that just opens the door for amazing and wonderful things to happen. It's really, it's a leap of faith. It's just saying, you know what? God would not have given me this inspiration if I wasn't supposed to follow it. And maybe I don't know exactly where it's going to lead or what the next step is, but I have to trust that God's going to be the one that opens the doors or the universe or sacred spirit or source or whatever word you want to use. But it's all about trusting that greater creative power that's much bigger than us, that he has your back or she or it, however you want to say it. We have so many words for that higher power. Insert whatever is appropriate for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on. I need a drink because my throat's getting dry here. And no, I know there's some of you out there wondering if this is beer. It is not. It is tea. Okay, so Thursday, the devil showing up in reverse. I like the devil in reverse, and I'll tell you why. 
The devil to me talks about fear because the only power the devil really has is to make us afraid of something. And so then we act out of fear and then we screw things up. So when I see the devil in reverse, this tells me that there's a situation that you have already faced your fears on and that with this situation, um, excuse me, Sorry about that. So with the situation that you've already faced your fears on, um, this comes up on Thursday. And I feel like maybe this is the first time it's come up before you've actually faced those fears and looked at them and went, man, why was I so afraid of you after all? Um, and when, so anyway, when those fears come up Thursday, I don't think they get you. They don't have the same hook that they used to have. And so you just get to move forward and just not even really pay that much attention to them at all like you used to. Now, the other thing that this can be is this can be temptations. So you may have some temptations that come up on Thursday, same thing. You've already really looked at them and seen, well, what is this really doing to my life when I give in to this temptation? I don't really want that. And so same thing, that temptation doesn't have that hook. So you get to move forward. You don't pay that much attention to it. So that's what I have coming in for you on Thursday. On Friday, eight of clubs in reverse. This is my card that talks about slow down. This is uh, maybe things are slowing down at work. Maybe you get some time to relax at home. Uh, maybe things with your family are starting to just slow down and you're getting a little bit of peaceful time instead of running all over the place to, you know, soccer practice and basketball practice and music lessons and God only knows what all else. Um, but this is talking about a slowdown in your life. And it feels to me like it's needed. I mean, I can almost hear like a collective that sigh of relief coming from a lot of you Tauruses. Um, I hate to say it, but don't expect the slowdown to last long. <laughs> Relax while you can, because it's not going to be around for a long time. All right, so Saturday. Hmm. Saturday, what you have coming up, Taurus, is you have the Nine of Swords. This is just telling me that there's something on your mind that you're worried about that is really not in your control. It's not within your sphere of influence, actually, but you're really worried about it and you're letting it distract you from doing those everyday things that you normally would be taking care of. You may even be um, letting this keep you from sleeping so much. The best thing you can do in this situation when you are worried about something like this is to look at it and say, okay, what am I in control of about this situation? Is there anything that I can do to improve this situation? If there is, do it. If there's not, acknowledge that and then just let it go. Then you have to make a way to have peace with whatever happens with the situation since you don't have control over it. And if you can do that, then you can focus on what you really would normally be focusing on your everyday tasks. You might be able to even sleep. Um, you really want to get rid of this worry. When the Nine of Swords comes up, this kind of worry, this kind of stress, this is um, not the healthiest thing for you. So that's why you want to deal with it when you feel it coming in. You want to find a way to make peace with whatever's going on so that you're not under this kind of stress. Now, Sunday, you have the Two of Coins showing up. And the Two of Coins is talking about basically a balancing act. So, um, there's different things that this can be balancing with the coins. It does um, have a financial connotation for some of you. For some of you, this is going to be balancing the checkbook, balancing expenses, balancing that cash flow. For others of you, though, I've seen this card come up meaning way more than financial. So for others of you, this could be talking about balancing places that you need to be. Maybe there's a lot of places you need to be during the day Sunday and just getting from one to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other, you know, without missing anything. And then the other thing that comes up is that this could be balancing time spent on tasks. Maybe there's a lot of things that you need to accomplish on Sunday. So then this is balancing again, work on this for a while, work on this for a while, work on this for a while, get this finished, work on this for a while, that type of thing. So a big balancing act. And the thing about it is you're feeling a little bit hectic or frantic maybe about this, but the people who are watching you, who are around you, they don't even realize. They just think that you're just the most graceful and relaxed person they've ever seen to multitask so well. <laughs> so um, the impression that people are getting is not a bad one, although it may have you a little bit feeling a little bit pushed <laughs> on Sunday. 
So that is your week, Taurus. Thank you so much for stopping by, hanging out, for liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. If you haven't seen my new monthly video, go ahead and check that out for February. I'm kind of just doing an experiment there to see how that goes. Uh, go ahead and tell me what you think of it after you've looked at it, if you haven't already. Everyone have a fantastic week. I'll see you back here next time. Peace out.